We do not own this house. We are simply tenants here. Mr. Speaker, will you please call the house to order? The bill is passed. Hi, and welcome to Assembly Update. I'm Assemblyman Phil Ramos. I represent the towns of Brentwood, Bayshore, Central Isop, and Isop. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a subject that's very important to many people, and that is raising the minimum wage, uh, an issue that affects many, more than 50% of the people who earn minimum wage are women. If this affects many households uh, and many people in, in my community. By raising a minimum wage, we not only help that particular person, but you're giving the person more purchasing power, uh, and that in, in turn stimulates our economy. So today we have somebody with us who is an, our honored guest, Mr. Charles Kahn, and he is from an organization called Strong Economy for All, um, who has been advocating for raising the minimum wage as well as many other issues in, in our community that we will learn about in the next uh, uh, few minutes. Uh, Mr. Kahn? Welcome. Thank you for having Very me. Very nice to have you here. Very nice to have one of the champions in, in our community. Thank you. Uh, who fights for uh, social justice and many of the things that, that are important to us. Uh, so let me ask you, what are your recent efforts uh, when it comes to uh, dealing with the minimum wage and some of the issues at hand? Right. So um, first, thank you for having me. Um, I think uh, when you really talk about the efforts to raise the minimum wage, especially in New York, um, it's important to think about where this rejuvenated push has started. And it really started with um, a couple hundred fast food workers, right? Um, this is very much connected to the fight for 15 nationwide. Um, and I, I think it's, it's, it's pretty uh, safe to say that New York should be one of the states that, that's really leading that fight. Um, and that fast food fight started with 200 workers, and now it's in 250 cities nation, uh, around the world, right? Six different continents. Um, it's really pushed, and it's really the main core issue is that if someone works 40 hours, you know, they deserve to be able to raise a family. And there should, the, should be dignity in Absolutely. Work. A person who works should be able to provide basics. Yes. Uh, and, and that's not happening right, right now. And, and the current minimum wage is, is leaving people in poverty. You know, mm -hmm. even though they're working two, three jobs, mm -hmm. it's leaving them in poverty. And they're not able to send their, their kids uh, to college, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're not even able to, to, to feed their kids before they go off to school. Yeah. Um, so and and when, when you think about it, when you have somebody that marginal economically, uh, it ends up costing government more yeah. because that person is going to need more services from government Absolutely. as a result of not being able to make ends meet. Absolutely. Uh, so it, it benefits all of society actually it to does. give that person a more more living wage. Right. And if we want to build up strong communities, you know, we, we have to be able to to have to have strong families and workers that you know can afford to to to, to buy a home, mm. right? Um, and it's a big part. You know, when that money goes into that community, it's going to go to the local businesses, and it's going to really help us to build really strong communities across New York. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, we see on TV with the pundits, we see certain ideologies where it's always us against them. Uh, they speak in terms of absolute um, defending the millionaires against the poor people, and it's got to be one or the other. And raising, some will say that raising the minimum wage hurts businesses. Uh, but in the end, you know, a careful balance is, I believe, is what makes our country strong. Every right. time every time our, our country does something to provide m a more equitable society, it's kind of like the, the tide that rises all ships, you know? Because if you have a small business in a community and people, by virtue of having a higher minimum wage, have more disposable income, that means that they have more consumers. They're, right. they're able to consume more, and in turn, that extra consumption creates more jobs, benefits those businesses. They're able to create more jobs because they're doing more commerce. Absolutely. Um, but if we have um, a skewed uh, economy yeah. where the wealth is just piled up in one end right. and you're marginalizing another end, in the end, I, I believe that hurts. I, and I, that I, hurts I, businesses. I absolutely yeah. agree with you. And I think that balance that you talk about has, has been out of whack for some time. Mm -hmm. um, New York State has the number one, uh, is number one in economic inequality in the entire country. Mm -hmm. Right, so that balance, you know, where where people um, that are business owners and people that are in the uh, and you know the upper class can can make money, but people at the bottom shouldn't have to starve to afford that, right? Um, and I think when you look at the recession and, and what happened there since the recession, all of the the economic recovery 
has been focused at the top. And a lot mm -hmm. of the people at the bottom are just, they're just treading water. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important that we, we raise those people up and we make sure that we're taking care of the people that, that, that aren't being taken care of right now. Yeah, if, if you look at the strength of our country, the strength of our country is that we have a large middle class. We are a country in the middle. We are a country in the middle, although on TV we hear the extremes, yeah. we hear this end, that end. We are a country in the middle. Most people are middle class. Uh, that's what makes a strong, vibrant c country. That's what stimulates the economy. Yep. We all know that, um, you know, most people don't know the complexities of, of economics. But they, most people do know one thing, that when people are spending money, the economy gets better. Yes. Right? When they don't spend money, the economy is worse. Absolutely. So, and, and that is why, like, right before Christmas, we always see the economy really yeah. thriving because yeah. people out there buying Christmas presents and everything. If you want somebody to spend money, put it in the hands of a poorer person or right. middle class. Right. Right? They're struggling. They, they right. have, they're up to here with bills. They're going to spend that right. the minute they get it. Yeah. So you're going to improve their quality of life. At the same time, you're going to be at a fast rate stimulating economy. You give that same money to a billionaire, who knows how long that's going to be in the bank right, before right, it actually right. gets spent yeah. and put out into the economy. You know, Absolutely. The, um, the trickle-down eco uh, economics it's that we heard of down. doesn't trickle down. Yeah, right? Absolutely. <laughs> at, at one point, that stops and, and things remain the same. And again, that's why we have to get away from those ideologies that in order for some to prosper, others must remain poor. Right. You know, us or them, extremes. We have to get away from that, you know, and, and bring balance, bring something more reasonable, and realize that what makes us strong is that we are a country in the middle. People, you know, people used to, uh, uh, years ago when, when the labor movement started, they say, oh, you know, they're going to ask for more money. This is going to cripple businesses. But labor is who we have, the, the organized labor, right. is who we have to thank for our middle class in this country. That's what brought our country out of a, a, a depression, a great depression, into a country that has more middle class people than poor or rich. Absolutely. You know? yeah. And when you look at you know the highest points in America, the the, the income gap was was much much smaller than it is now, right? Those, those people that you spoke about, um, these families, they had money to, to to buy homes and to go shopping and and to have a. Uh, two cars, three cars, mm -hmm. and, and the most important thing to think about that was that they had decent wages, they had decent jobs, um, and they were able to provide for their families. And that's all that, that most of these people want to be able to do is provide for these, their families. Mm -hmm. you know, we're asking you know, for something close to a living wage. We're not asking for a luxury wage. Certainly, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's really important to, to keep that in mind, that mm -hmm. it's, it's not just good on a, on a moral level for these families, but it's good for our economy. Any way you look at it, you know, we should be raising the minimum wage to something that people can live off of. Yeah, and that's why, you know, we've been vehemently fighting for this. Uh, as you know, the Senate has to pass their budget, the Assembly passes their budget, the governor already put out his version, and then we sit at the table. But it, we have to include our priorities in the budget. So we're, our budget is coming out on Thursday. I'm happy to say that we're starting to see the results of my promotion now <laughs> because I, uh, I was promoted this year to uh, deputy majority leader. Uh, and that gives us, that puts us in a leadership position to be able to uh, weigh in a little heavier for Long Island. And as a result of the talks that we've had, we've been able to um, get Long Island included in the higher minimum wage. Originally, what was proposed is to give, um, bring New York City up to $15, which would be higher than the rest of the state. Um, and the rest of the state, I think, ultimately come, gets up to $12.60. Uh, Yes. Uh, and, and but New York City would be fifteen dollars. When I saw that, I saw that there was a need for Long Island. Suffolk and Nassau have just as high a cost of living as New York City. In some areas, maybe even higher. Right. And if there's going to be a higher minimum wage, it should also apply to uh, Nassau and Suffolk. So I'm happy to say that our version of the budget yeah. will include that priority. Right and that Long Island will not be left behind when it comes to that. Right. And, and that should be the beginning of a trend of many things in which we must take into consideration the regional difference of Nassau and Suffolk and the fact that the cost of living, cost, everything costs more. Education, right. everything we do costs more, and that has to be figured into these formulas that fund things that are important to us on Long Island. It's absolutely true. And I mean, as a product of Central Islip, and, and now I live in the city, there's not a big difference, you know, on, on how much things cost. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's really important to, to, to have 
to, for people to realize that Long Island, Westchester, those are also really expensive places mm -hmm. um, to live and, and we want people to be able to survive there as well. And I think it's also important that not only are we um, getting to a, a wage that's, that's livable, right, but we're we're indexing it to inflation so yes. that we don't have to keep fighting we these fights. We don't have fights. to revisit this. Right. Because it becomes a political football. Yes. That's what happens. And we're playing with, with people's lives, with their quality of life, especially the, the large percentage of women right. who are earning minimum wage. Right. And, 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 you know, it becomes leverage up here. But from now on, uh, if we're successful here, uh, from now on, after the minimum wage reaches $15 an hour on Long Island, then it will be indexed on inflation. So we no longer have to revisit that. And people are, are guaranteed that, that there's some dignity. Right. In, in work, in working, and that uh, really you're able to meet your basic needs with right. that. Yeah. And it's, it's important, and like you said, you know, uh, we want to commend uh, the, the Assembly for, for, for putting such a strong bill on the table, and, and you know, the governor is, is, is trying, right? He, he's put forth 1050 um, statewide and 1150 in the city, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a move in the right direction, but it's, it's not enough, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and on, people on Long Island, um, um, people in the city, people in Westchester, uh, people all around the state, they understand that it, it's a move forward, it's a raise that people need, but it, it's it's not enough. And right. we've got to make sure that, um, and it doesn't even mention the Senate, and it looks like they may not put anything, right? Right. The Senate, the uh, majority, is has been against it. Right. So it's important for our residents to know, if this is important to you, you need to call your senator. Absolutely. You need to work on the Senate. Right. The, the Assembly, we've done what we've had to do. The governor has put something out there right. that at least is a baseline to Absolutely. be able to raise it. Uh, so philosophically, the the, uh, the governor and the assembly are in line in that there's a need to be able to raise this. The yeah. senator is against this, so people need to call their senator yeah, they need to know and that. hold them accountable to respond to our community. Right. That, when, the, when they're stuck in a job with, with stagnant wages and, and they feel like there's nothing they can do about it and they're looking to their elected officials, mm -hmm. they need to know who's responsible for making sure, for, for stopping them from getting a raise. They need to know who's fighting for them and who isn't. Right. So, and that's why we have to engage. And that's why the work that you do by coming up here uh, with your organization and many of our residents, we've had several hundred of our residents from Brentwood uh, CI and Bayshore come up here and lobby on different issues. Nothing works like actual residents coming up here and engaging. Because then they see that there's a community behind this. It's not just an elected official, uh, you know, with an eloquent speech. Yeah. Uh, we need real people, real Absolutely. faces behind the issues that, that we fight for. Uh, so that, that Ultimately, we have seen the results in the past couple of years of engaging uh, communities, especially communities like mine that are very diverse community, have traditionally been out of the loop when it comes to the legislative process. Uh, many times we've had small pockets calling for things publicly, um, but never part of the process. So we have this opportunity and we, we must take advantage of it because it's not something that comes around every day, and we many have sacrificed to bring us to this point where we can actually promote some results from uh, from government. And here we are at a juncture where we're ready to make history, and I believe that we can come down on the right side of history Absolutely. by raising this minimum wage and helping the quality of life of many people on Long Island. Absolutely. Again, I want to thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone in your organization, which is Strong Economy for All. Yes. And very proud to see a CI, an ex-CI yeah. student <laughs> become such a leader and uh, become so important in the things that you fight for. Thank you. Thank you.